Once upon a time, a little girl was born in beautiful Haiti, the first black republic sharing an island with its estranged neighbor, the Dominican Republic. This girl grew up to be a woman of character, deeply grieved by the inequities that surrounded her all her life. And eager to mirror the positive change she desperately wanted for her country. This woman who became a physician, dedicating needs her life to the service of brothers and sisters in need, had the amazing opportunity to visit Rwanda. For the mid-year convening of the Atlantic Fellows for Health Equity, an amazing family she was grateful to have joined and that was slowly but surely shaping her life in unimaginable ways. Healthy nation, wealthy nation. As soon as I landed in Rwanda, two things caught my attention. I was struck by the realization that Rwanda was the land of doers. Secondly, Rwanda's motto for the Ministry of Health is healthy nation, wealthy nation, and suddenly became my own axiom. Rwanda, a country tested by the worst form of tragedy, strained by unbearable suffering and destruction, managed to magnificently rebuild itself. How? Through strong leadership, great communication and forgiveness, community engagement, collaboration, partnership, and by making healthcare top priority. The government and all sociopolitical leaders understood that the socioeconomic development of their country mm, was closely linked to the physical and mental well-being of the population. Everything suddenly made sense to me. And deep inside, I knew the change I longed for all my life to Haiti will never be achieved as long as we, Haitian, do not put health equity as number one priority. Research shows that the social determinants of health can have a stronger impact on influencing an individual health than healthcare itself. This is why it's crucial to also address those and other to effectively tackle health inequality and achieve results. The woman came back from Rwanda with a clear vision of what needed to be done and ready to call every one of her constituents for action. She was aware that collective effort lead to significant and long-lasting results. That's why she was not reluctant to share her new vision and her drive in order to engage partners and get them to commit. But Lelos did she know days, weeks, even months went by, she could not get herself to do any of the things she promised she would. Somehow, along the way, she has lost her motivation. Burned out, yes, she was burned out. And it went undiagnosed and unnoticed until she became very depressed. Fortunately, an ally um, noticed that the caregiver was on the other side of the door nod and needed care herself. The woman did not know to ask for help. In fact, she would have never imagined that her two could be dealing with mental distress. But the Atlantic Fellowship for Health Equity taught her humility 
and vulnerability as strengths. So when help came, she received it with open arms because she was on a mission greater than herself and could not risk having a purpose derailed. Yes, everything I learned over the course of this year has prepared me for the career shift I'm contemplating. I feel empowered, confident, and strongly motivated to take my country to another level of development, one project at a time. Everything we have been learning as a cohort in terms of leadership, collective action, health equity made sense and wonder, especially now, as a remarkable tale of hope and unity unfolds along the border of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Hmm. It's how begin with the construction of an irrigation canal in the bed of the Massacre River, carried out by United Nations hands. This initiative sparked an unprecedented movement in Haiti, the canal movement, where Haitian people put aside their differences and bended together, working side by side, shoulder to shoulder, for greater good of their beloved nation. This is a profound display of the incredible power of unity. Across the border in Dominican Republic, whispers of unease emerged. Thus, they saw this growing collaboration as a potential threat to their own progress. For they had already built 11 canals within the same riverbed. Tension brewed on both sides, but in Haiti, the flame of hope burned even brighter. The vision of the Transcellular Canal became a catalyst for a deeper transformation in Haiti. It compelled people to see the world through a different lens, to act together and to live together as a single harmonious community. The notion that Haitians could rely one on one another became a living, breathing reality through this monumental undertaking. The project gave birth to a profound sense of community where each individual contributed according to their means, enriching the tapestry of Haitian life. It's a story of a shared dream of the unwavering commitment of a nation determined to build a brighter tomorrow. The story of the Transular Canal is undoing testament to the power of unity, fraternity, and cooperation. Someone can ask themselves, why presenting that? Because equity is not fake. Equity is real. That's exactly the pillars of equity. The canal movement has in it a profound transformation within me, compelled me to turn my focus towards the ultimate vision of rebuilding Haiti into a prosperous, united, an entirely new nation. I am driven by the dream of creating a Haiti where communities thrive, where every citizen has access to their basic needs, and where a spirit of sharing pervades our society. This is the project I aim to inspire my fellow Asians to embark on with me as we construct a strategic plan firmly rooted in unity. The health equity program has played a pivotal role in bringing me to this point. It has instilled in me values of humility, love, and respect, which I'm determined to make a reality by working towards 
a community that truly leaves no one behind. The tools and knowledge I gained from the program have equipped me to make a positive impact on my surroundings, colleagues, family, and friends. All whom are valuable resources that can contribute to the rebirth of our beloved nation. I envision a Haiti where people come together in prayer, share meals, and have equal access to opportunities. I dream of a Haiti that cherish its resources for the greater goods, offering robust education and accessible health care for all. My hope is rekindled for a free Haiti that can nourish its children to thriving agriculture. The project of New Haiti will not be the result of the efforts of a single individual, but rather the collective dream and labor of the entire Asian people. It will embody the principle of equity where the focus will not be on individual positions, but on what the community collectively owns. Love, unity, fraternity, and collaboration are the cornerstone of this new AD, where every citizen is regarded as a precious worship, contributing to the construction of a stronger and more united nation. As I reflect on this incredible journey, I want to express my heartfelt appreciation, yes, to my fellow Haitians, who have joined this movement and made it a reality. Their unwavering determination and collaborative spirit has already given birth to a new Haiti that we can all be proud of. And I also want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for ascribing meaning to the Ambuti philosophy, as I am because we are together. Let's change the world. Thank you.